Could be hepatitis E. Start him on solumendrol. Won't hurt him so much that it'll kill him, and it won't hurt him so little that we can't tell. Oh my god! If you're wondering why House smacked himself with what appears to be a kitchen roll holder, then you're in the right place. House is trying to cause himself a distracting injury, which limits the body's ability to feel severe pain in two places at once. He's really reaching breaking point, having gone over 70 hours without his Vicodin. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House videos. This will be episode 34. Detox season one episode 11. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before house does as a doctor working in London And that is why you don't steal your dad's car for a joyride Interestingly the boyfriend seemed like he was unwell before the crash with some coughing up blood the most common cause of that would be a chest infection, but this is how, so it could be rarer causes as well. Vasculitis like Wagner's or Churg Strauss, or could be top of mind good pasture syndrome as well, although that is congenital, would usually present much earlier. Could also be an infection like Legionella or uh, pneumocystis pneumonia if he's got a background of HIV or tuberculosis. Cancer is possible as well, although unlikely in someone who is so young. Definitely would want an x-ray, blood test, sputum sample, if he is coughing up any phlegm at least. Kid's gonna be dead in a matter of days if we don't figure out why his red blood cells are disintegrating. It's infection. I'll talk to Wilson about lymphoma, ANA for lupus, radio immunoassay for drugs. Interesting, so we know the boy has had recurrent internal bleeding for the last three weeks and hemolytic anemia, which is basically where red blood cells are destroyed faster than they can be produced. The mechanism of destruction can occur both in the blood vessels as well as outside, like in the spleen or liver. Intravascular destruction could be due to things like mechanical heart valves, hemolytic uremic syndrome, especially if he's had diarrhea previously. Extravascular could be things like sickle cell anemia or hypersplenism, malaria, things like that. Now, if you're wondering why House is in a rush, it's because the hospital has run out of painkillers and he's looking for another hit. I'll give you a week off clinic duty if you can go a week without narcotics. No way. I love the clinic. A month. You're on, mister. Negative for drugs. I and I was negative. Gallium scan was clear. A week without drugs. A week without drugs. Hass was struggling for two hours, never mind 150. This patient also seems a little bit like an enigma. The usual suspects seem to have been ruled out with the tests. I think atypical pneumonia like mycoplasma is a great cause here. It would cause a cough and autoimmune hemolytic anemia. I'm surprised they haven't done that chest x-ray yet. Again, they're fishing with a spear instead of a net. Other considerations could be malaria or spicier environmental house-esque causes. Could be things like snake bites or heavy metal poisoning with arsenic or lead some other kind of toxin. We know the patient's mother died of pancreatic cancer. Maybe that meant the boy was in hospitals or institutions and caught the mycoplasma from there where it's more common. <coughs> Gosh, it seems like I've got mycoplasma. <laughs> Need to find out more. No, it's dark. I can't see. It's a retinal clot in the left eye. The clot tells us something. Okay, what hides from a gallium scan? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. It's an infection in his heart. Look at Chase right now. Who has sent that lady to distract them all from this differential? House doesn't seem too worried about his pain right now either. This is exactly why you need women or foremen on every team so they can get the guys back on track. Seems like their top suspect is endocarditis now, which is an infection of the heart that can throw off clots to different parts of the body, like the brain, eyes, hands, kidneys, you can diagnose it with an echocardiogram and it would need six weeks of IV antibiotics and likely a valve replacement to treat. I actually had a 30 year old male who got endocarditis while I was on cardiothoracics. You won't believe how he got it, a hair transplant in Turkey. Careful who you let operate on you people. Poor guy wanted a new hairstyle and ended up with a huge scar across his chest. 
Another common way to get heart infections is poor dental hygiene. Time to pick that tooth floss back up. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Question for you smart people. What are the signs of a heart infection you can see on people without doing any tests? Drop your answers down below. She's a real masseuse. Tell me some more. Wow. Take off your clothes. So the blindness will be permanent, won't it? Oh, this patient is in a really difficult catch-22 situation. He's got a clot and bleeding all at once. That means the team are stuck not being able to anticoagulate him and save his vision. It's rare that we get into this situation with someone so young, but in a and &E, I did have a 70-year-old male who was admitted with left-sided weakness after a stroke. We wanted to give him clot-busting treatment for the stroke, but he just had major abdominal surgery. Unfortunately, he hadn't been taking his heparin injections after the surgery, which led to the clot forming. He did have a good long-term recovery, but it took a lot longer without the clot-busting treatment. I also love how House has been experimenting with alternative methods of pain relief here. Any pregnant woman knows how frustrating it is not being able to take medication, and me and my wife have had to explore this recently. Acupuncture has been shown to be an effective alternative in research studies for many chronic pain conditions, and some NHS clinics in the UK are actually offering it as a treatment now. Massage is also good with relaxation techniques, although not being offered in the clinics. The theory behind many of these is that there is something called a pain gate, which means that when you're in a distressed situation, feeling stressed or angry, then the amount of pain you feel is much higher, and therapies to close that pain gate will be very effective. Kids echo is normal, no sign of any vegetations on heart valves. If we remove some of the liquid from the eye itself, the vitreous humor, it might make some extra room around the retinal artery. It's very creative. What Chase is suggesting is an actual treatment for branch retinal artery occlusion, which is what this patient has. The idea is that removing some of the fluid from the eye relieves some of the pressure on the artery that helps to dislodge the clot and restore blood flow. Sounds good in theory, but doesn't have much, if any, proven benefit, and it can lead to bacteria being introduced to the eye, causing infection. I suppose it's worth trying in this situation though, since the alternative is him losing his vision. I'm very worried about House here and his ability to make decisions while in pain. He's been making decisions more quickly and rashly than he has before, like telling Chase to double the antibiotics because they're not working yet. The other thing to mention is that just because the transthoracic echo ruled out endocarditis. Doesn't mean it's not there. The only way to rule it out with enough certainty is by doing something called a transesophageal echo, which is putting a probe down the food pipe with the ultrasound pointing towards the heart so that it can get a better unobstructed view. And so they should schedule one of those if they're suspecting it here. Now, if you want to get a better view of this channel, then check out the channel membership. Not only does it support me, but it also gives you access to exclusive member perks, like being able to suggest an episode and a season for me to react to, as well as getting early access to new videos. To say thank you for support, I'm doing a limited time giveaway to one lucky member who will get a one hour tutor session with me on, on any medical topic that they choose. And also, being a member gives you access to future giveaways like raffles with cash prizes. So press join now to be able to secure your place. I can see. It's TZ59, we're getting into the ICU. His liver is shutting down. If your partner lets you vomit on them and still around to tell the tale, marry them. Also, I know House's communication skills are about as polished as a rust bucket, but even for him, this is bad. Either way, we have a new symptom, liver failure, hemolytic anemia, bleeding, infectious mononucleosis or glandular fever, with a complication of cold type autoimmune hemolytic anemia could be the cause, could still be mycoplasma pneumonia or endocarditis. They need that TOE and chest x-ray as soon as possible. Could be hepatitis E. Start him on solumendrol. Won't hurt him so much that it'll kill him, and it won't hurt him so little that we can't tell. Oh my god! If you're wondering why House smacked himself with what appears to be a kitchen roll holder, 
then you're in the right place. House is trying to cause himself a distracting injury, which limits the body's ability to feel severe pain in two places at once. He's really reaching breaking point, having gone over 70 hours without his Vicodin. House is such a stoic, suffering in silence while he still has the option to go back onto the pills, but isn't taking it. Now the decision from the team is whether the patient has hepatitis E or lupus using simply a clinical diagnosis. I can tell you, it's not lupus, it's never lupus. The problem there is hepatitis E is an infection and lupus is autoimmune. So if they give treatment for lupus and it's hep E, the patient would deteriorate. Solimedrol is IV methylprednisolone, which is a steroid medication that isn't quite as potent as other immunosuppressants the team were thinking of giving. Now, the other question here is what are the different types of hepatitis? There are actually five different types, even though A, B, and C are the most well-known. Hepatitis A is transmitted by the fecal to oral route, usually lasts up to six weeks and is a self-limiting condition. Fecal oral route includes things like drinking contaminated water, Hence why we ask people to drink bottled water and avoid salad, etc. when they're going to a place without proper sanitation. Hepatitis B has an acute and a chronic phase. The younger you are, the more likely the acute disease can progress to chronic. So it's more than 90% of cases in infants and that reduces to about 5% to infected adults. It can be transmitted through blood, needles, sexually transmitted, or even vertical transmission from mother to baby. Hepatitis C usually has no initial symptoms and causes chronic disease in about 70% of patients that are infected, which can lead to cirrhosis of the liver if left unchecked. It's usually transmitted through blood to blood contact, like intravenous drug use, and can now be cured in 95% of chronic infections thanks to a new drug called sofosbuvir or simeprivir. Hepatitis D is a co-infection with hepatitis B that needs the hep B virus to replicate. It increases the risks of complications like cirrhosis and liver cancer from hep B and is bloodborne. Intravenous drug use and hemodialysis patients are at the main risks for this. Hepatitis E can range from a mild illness all the way to liver failure and it has no established treatment. It is contracted through the fecal oral route, similar to hepatitis A. It generally is more severe in pregnant women and can cause preterm delivery, abortion, stillbirth, and death of the child after birth. There is a vaccine that's licensed in China, although it isn't available anywhere else because the World Health Organization hasn't recommended it due to a lack of supporting evidence. He's had a major bleed. He's going into hypovolemic shock. Pressure 60, heart rate's 140. Need an angiography, stat! Angiography revealed major upper and lower GI bleeding. What they're trying to get at here is liver failure causing bleeding and hemodynamic compromise. In reality, a liver patient looks more like this, which you can see looks very different to our patient here. This could still fit with endocarditis, lupus, or hep E. Apparently he's been traveling recently and has had some hallucinations about being tortured. My next steps here would be to stabilize a patient, make sure he's in intensive care and check clotting markers to understand how to fix the bleeding and what's causing it. Likely vitamin K and prothrombin complex concentrate would be very important to replace depleted clotting factors. You would also probably want to consider switching his antibiotics since they can cause acute liver failure in rare cases. Once stabilized, I'll definitely want to do that endoscopy and echo of the heart. He needs a new liver. We screwed up. Put him on the transplant list. Take your pills before you kill this kid. Who's Jules? Our cat. Does this matter? No, I'm sorry. Your cat. Your cat. Yes, it matters. Okay, the kid is now hallucinating with liver failure and a cat. He could have toxoplasmosis. How can an animal so cute cause so much chaos? Well, if it is toxoplasmosis, infected cats pass the parasitic Toxoplasma gondii in their stool. Humans can end up becoming contaminated by having it on their hands and ingesting the cysts. This is why hand hygiene is so important. The ingested tachyzoites can then enter the neural tissue and become bradyzoite cysts. It can cause hepatitis, retinitis, encephalitis, 
and hepatosplenomegaly and liver failure leading to the hemolysis due to hypersplenism. It's diagnosed using a blood test for antibodies to Toxoplasma gondii and lumbar puncture with a special stain. Treatment is with pyrimethamine and sulfadiazine. So tell me we've got it. I hope so. I don't think this is lupus. This is just a kid missing his cat. Jules is dead. You have a dead family pet and you never mention it. What yeah. happened to the cat? Oh, this is getting spicy. Seems like they're focusing more and more on the cat here. If I got this though, it would still be pretty late, but I would take it. Toxoplasmosis is a great diagnosis here because if he has it, that means they could potentially avoid the liver transplant. In all honesty as well, he couldn't really get a new liver here if they didn't know what the cause was since whatever broke his old one would just likely break the new one as well. So question for you smart people, what are the functions of the liver? Drop your answers down below. Old age. With, Where'd you sleep? With Keith. Where is Jules? What the hell are you doing, house? Everybody stop! The diagnosis is here. What he pulled out of that decrepit kitty's body could be one of those oocysts we were talking about that contain all that juicy parasitic material. Very spicy way to diagnose the patient. Could have just done a blood test, but, but that's nowhere near as fun as grave robbing the family cat. Also, love how they authorized the transplant based on a lupus diagnosis with totally negative autoantibodies. No evidence of treatment response. Wouldn't exactly happen in real life, but makes for some excellent television. Now back to the mic drop moment. He has acute naphthalene toxicity. Termites, they create naphthalene to protect their nests. You are not removing that kid's liver. Ah. Ah. Have you completely lost your mind? <gasps> <laughs> this has to be one of the best house moments so far. When reason leaves the building, so does your sterile field. That being said though, no sane surgeon would consider operating on this kid without an actual diagnosis. Also, naphthalene poisoning due to termite infestation. What did I think of that? It is a type of toxin that kills moths. In humans with a deficiency of the enzyme G6PD, it can be particularly dangerous, even fatal. Some symptoms include headache, altered mental status, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and fever. Treatment is with IV methylene blue, acetylcysteine, and ascorbic acid. Believe it or not, this has actually happened previously. There is a case study of a 29 year old woman who ate eight naphthalene mothballs. She survived with the treatment though, thankfully. And the naphthalene stayed in fat. He started losing weight. His body had to get its energy somewhere else. It started to burn fat. The floodgates opened, the poison poured into his system. Oh my God! Ooh, poor house. He's such a misunderstood genius. Many have been outcast in their time. Socrates in the fifth century BC encouraged people to think for themselves and the authorities considered him a threat and executed him for corrupting the youth of society. Galileo revolutionized our understanding of astrophysics, helping us to show that the earth revolves around the sun rather than the other way around. And he was called a heretic. Charles Darwin, when publishing The Origin of Species in 1859, was ridiculed with pictures drawing him as half a monkey, half man, misrepresenting the theory of evolution. The life of a genius is often a difficult and solitary one, as is seen time and time again throughout history. I want him locked up! Your cat did not die of old age. Give me 24 hours. We'll Pump your son full of calories. Give the liver to the other guy. Oh yes, House and his team managed to convince their dad to go ahead with the treatment, which is basically eating a ton. Imagine that, your doctor tells you that the only way to live is to burn no fat for a long, long time. Where's the Ben and Jerry's? I've been training for this moment my whole life. Son, can you clear your room? No dad, I'm conserving energy. Okay, I'll clean it for you. There are worse ways to live. Ionar's down and his raccoon is climbing. His liver is healing. It's gonna be just fine. We made it a week. Man, 
won my prize. The patient is better, House gets one month off clinic duty, and all it took was blunt force trauma to his left hand, and being slapped by the person you saved. Easy day if you ask me. It's quite impressive House went that long without his meds though, and was still able to work. That tells me the addiction wasn't severe, as if it were, then he would have been way too unwell to actually be there. It can even be life-threatening, which is why detox like this is usually done in a controlled environment. Often that includes substitutes that don't have the same addictive tendencies like methadone and buprenorphine. This app is a 7 out of 10 for entertainment, I would say. Accuracy, 6 out of 10 because of the transplant and the diagnosis, I would say 8 out of 10. You learned anything? I'm an addict. I'm not stopping. I pay my bills. I make my meals. I function. You have no relationships. You've changed. You're miserable. And you Did House just admit he's an addict? No way! But what is addiction really? It's a habit of using a substance to make you feel better. Think about it in the form of smoking. Most of you have either smoked in the past or are currently smoking or know a family member that does. What happens when you feel that nicotine craving? You wanna get another hit and re-raise that nicotine in the same way. So how's taking the pills is no longer being triggered by his pain, but to stop himself feeling the negative effects of coming off the drugs. Very interesting. Of course I changed! And everything's the leg? Nothing's the pills. They let me do my job. Better hope he never finds out that that was your idea. He'd never believe it. What a twist! Wilson set this whole thing up. Genius. Now House knows it's a problem, but will he do anything about it? And if I'm trying this hard, surely I get the diagnosis in the next one. Find out here. Stay curious.